evening yogis. Thank you so much for joining me today to do some yoga after taking Memorial Day off. It feels like a really long time since I have done any virtual yoga. It's only been three days. It feels like several weeks, so I'm glad to be back on the mat with you. Why don't we work a little bit on balance today and balance in the physical sense of standing on one foot. So we'll be doing different types of exercises and poses to help us better stand on one foot. Whether you want to do that because you have a particular balance pose that you have always wanted to do but struggled with, or you just want the practical application, balancing on one foot helps to strengthen the muscles of the foot and the leg. It helps to build proprioception, your perception, your body perception of the world around you, and is just generally a healthy thing to do, especially as you begin to age. Being able to lift and lower your legs independently of one another is one of those things that allows you to be independent longer as you get older. So lots of fun things that come from balancing. We're going to start off a little bit strangely today. We're actually going to start in a squat. This isn't going to be particularly easy, so just do as much as you can. What we want to do is start to just get right into the hips. So go ahead as you're ready. You can face the short edge of your mat if you want. I'm going to face the long edge just so that I'm facing you. But you can come into any type of squat that works for you. So you could come into a horse style squat, be kind of wide, knees bent. Feel free to lean a little forward here so that you're gazing down towards the floor. If that feels comfortable, you can rest your forearms and your thighs and come into a squat here. You could rest your hands on the floor if that feels comfortable. You could rest your hands on some props. If you like, you can come down to Malasana pose, hips between the heels. Take your feet as wide as you need to, to get your heels on the floor or place a prop a rolled up blanket or a little bit of mat if your heels don't like to come down just because we're going to be working here for a few minutes so it'll be way more comfortable if your heels don't like to touch the floor to have some support underneath them. If these ones don't work for you you can always go wide to a squat, <laughs> goddess squat here and we're just going to come into the squat and stay. And we're going to try to stay for a full minute here at any point if you feel you need it you come out, you release yourself from this position because it will get intense very quickly. You don't need to go super far. You don't need to go to your maximum as you start because the duration will add that intensity. And it's totally fine to move around a little bit to kind of come from side to side or to wiggle your toes. You can use your support of your hands and just start to Feel your hips and your thighs and your knees and your feet, really your whole lower body here. And you're almost halfway there. If you need to take a break, you can straighten up your legs, you shake them out, come back when you're ready. If it just feels hot and slightly uncomfortable, maybe we can stay here for a little longer. If you feel pain, please back off. At this point, we're almost there. You're feeling some nice heat in your legs, in your feet. Take one more deep breath here. And then you're going to come to a forward fold. If your hands are close to the floor, you can put them down or you can put your hands on your thighs if they're a little higher up. And you're just going to start to straighten your legs. You can keep your feet really quite wide if you want to here. You can heel toe them in a little closer together. I like to turn my toes so my feet are more parallel. That feels better to my knees. And maybe just move a little bit side to side. Let all of that go. Lift, you can press your hands to the floor or blocks, reach the crown of your head forward. As you exhale, fold if you need your feet to be close together to rise up to the sky, go ahead and heel toe your feet in. If you want, you can leave your feet kind of a little wider and then just roll up. You 
take arms out and up or you can let the arms be heavy. See what feels good to you. Come all the way up to standing. And as you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Step your feet closer together and if you're not already there, come to the front of your mat. We're gonna do a couple of more held poses just to build some heat in the body and then we'll start to flow into a little bit of balance work. Bring your hands in front of your heart, spread your toes nice and wide. As you inhale, lift your arms up over your head. As you exhale, draw your hands to the heart, fold forward. As you inhale, find halfway lift. And then as you exhale, you're gonna step your left foot to the back of your mat, and you're just going to hold this lunge. Right knee is stacked above the right ankle. You're working to lift your left hip up so it's on the same plane as your right hip. So your back leg is working here a little bit too in this lunge position. Lunge position. And you can always place blocks or books or water bottles on either side of your front foot to give yourself a little more height. Shrug your shoulders away from your ears and imagine relaxing your hips to the floor without kind of like sinking in. You shouldn't feel a stretch on the left quadricep, the left hip flexor area, the groin, but you do want to feel like your hips are coming a little bit more towards the floor. And the good news is you're already halfway there. Just feeling into the thigh. Notice what you do with your toes here as well. Do they death grip the back or does one kind of like lift up and shoot off in other directions from the others? They're good indicators of where you might need to find some balance. Take one more deep breath here. And then go ahead and plant your hands down. You could step back to downward dog, or you could drop your left knee and step back to table. Your choice. In your table or your downward facing dog, just take a few breaths. You can move around a little bit if you want. Just one more breath here. And then from your table or your dog, you just walk your feet back to the front of the mat. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, you're gonna roll up to the sky. You can take arms out and up, or you can do the heavy arms, whatever feels right for you this evening. Exhale, hands come in front of the heart. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And then as you exhale, step your right foot back. You're just going to that lunge on the left side, stacking the left knee over the left ankle. And you want your hips to be on the same plane. So one hip isn't falling towards the floor. One hip isn't lifting unduly. But your hips are working, but soft. And you start to really feel your legs. You start to really feel your feet here. You can notice, you can even notice visually what's happening with your toes by taking a little peek. You can take a peek at those back toes and see what's happening. And finding where you feel the work here. You're resisting gravity. This is the same thing that you do when you are in a balance pose. You have to resist the urge to come crashing to the floor. arch of your left foot. Take another deep, full breath here. And then you plant your hands down. You can step back to downward dog or you can step back to table, your choice. Any way to move there. If you're in table, you can do cow cat. In dog, you could pedal your feet, and you could do the same one you did before, or you could do a different pose. Another deep breath here. And then you're going to step your left foot forward to the front of the mat. If you came with me from the low variation, take your back toe, lift your back knee, walk your hands to the inside of your left foot, and walk to the long edge of your mat. 
turn both sets of toes to face towards the long edge of the bed. And here we're going to hold a wide-legged forward fold for again about a minute. So you don't need to go to the widest possible point. You want to go to a point where you can place your hands on the floor, hands on blocks, so you have some support. And then you just want to hang out. If it feels good to come a little closer to the floor and bring your gaze back behind you, you can go there. And you might begin by just feeling a stretch in your inner thighs or your hamstrings. It's kind of what happens first. And as we stay here, you might start to notice some other stuff as well. Notice the work in your outer ankles. Notice the work in the soles of your feet. Again, you might notice what's happening with your toes. You might even wiggle them a little bit. And start to notice, oh yeah, my calves are holding me up here. Again, it's that resistance of gravity. It's the resistance of your feet kind of sliding out to the sides so that you are staying elevated, you're staying stable. Good. A little bit more time here again with any of these poses. You stay just as long as you can. If it's just uncomfortable and kind of maybe today, it's a warm day, a little sweaty to hang out here, that's okay. See if you can stay. And if you experience pain or pulling in your muscles, please stop. Take a break. Goal is not to hurt ourselves. The goal is to make it so we are less likely to hurt ourselves. We have one more deep breath here if we can. And then you press your hands down, roll your shoulders back. You're going to walk back to the front of your mat. Turn both of your feet to face it, and then go ahead and just step up to your forward fold. As you exhale, feel that lovely release in your legs. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale to soften your back. As you inhale, roll all the way up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Take a few moments here. If it feels okay, go ahead and close your eyes so that you can really bring your attention into your feet and into your legs. And just become aware of what's happening there. Become aware of where you feel the work in the muscles. I can feel my hamstrings. I can feel my quadriceps. I feel my ankles here after doing that work. What do you feel? Another deep breath. And then blink your eyes open. On an inhale, reach your arms up over your head. On your exhale, you fold. Inhale, find halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down. Step now your right foot first to the back of the mat or your right knee. And then your left foot or your left knee to the back of the mat. Downward facing dog or table pose. We'll take this through a vinyasa. So as you inhale, come forward to plank. Shoulders over the wrist. Knees could be up or down, exhale to the floor. Untuck your toes, inhale, lift cobra, or you could take sphinx or up dog if you prefer. Exhale, come on back to downward dog or table pose. Take a breath there, feel free to kind of wiggle yourself into it. And then press your left heel towards the floor if you are in downward facing dog. If you're in table, you can ignore that one. And lift your right leg to the sky. So you really feel a nice stretch in your downward facing dog at the back of your left leg. And just hold here. Think about dropping your right hip to the same plane as your left hip. Normally that means your toes, whether you're in your downward dog or you're in your table, your right toes turn to face the floor. Lift the pit of your belly, reach the crown of your head forward in your table, or a little bit downward in your downward facing dog, your choice. Hold here for another breath. And then you're going to step that right foot back up to the front of the mat, work it between your hands, assisting as needed. Here, 
bring your fingertips to frame your front foot. You're going to see if you can lift up to crescent lunge. Soften your back knee, roll your shoulders back, and see if you can come all the way up. You can bring your hands to your thigh, or your hands to your hips, or if you feel stable, your arms can go all the way up to the sky. Soften your shoulders. If you need to, you are absolutely welcome to set your back heel down here. Just be mindful as you come through this next portion that you're keeping your front knee stable. It's not wobbling side to side. It's a little harder to do that with a back heel on the floor. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're gonna fold forward, hinge at your hips, draw your arms back behind you. Inhale, see if you can lift up. Exhale, fold forward. You have one more like that. And you're gonna stay hinged forward here. And you're gonna bring all of your weight into your right foot. You might have to hop your back foot in several times. And you're gonna bring your weight into your back foot and you're gonna see if you can come up and lift your left knee towards your chest. And this may or may not go gracefully. There might be many times where your left foot touches the floor. Hug your right hip in. Take a deep breath here as you inhale. And as you exhale, simply set your left foot next to your right foot. Comfortable distance. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Just doing the same thing on the other side. Inhale, halfway left. As you exhale, plant your hands down. Step first your left foot or your left knee back. Then your right foot or your right knee back. Downward dog or table. Through the vinyasa, inhale to plant. Exhale, full or half push up to the floor. Inhale. You can do upward dog, you can do cobra again, you can do sphinx with the elbows on the floor. And then we make our way back, table or downward facing dog. Again, in downward facing dog, you want to kind of press your right heel a little further towards the floor as you lift your left leg up. Table, you can ignore that. Both poses, soften the left hip, left toes turn to face the floor, lift the pit of your belly. Feel the back of your leg working, feel your hamstrings and your glutes really important muscles when you stand on one foot. Take another deep breath here. Enjoy the stretch of the back of the right leg if you're in dog. And then step that left foot forward. You want it to be relatively close to between the hands so that when you come up, your front knee is over your front ankle. And you're working for a crescent pose with a little softness of that back knee, but if you need to put the back heel on the floor for warrior one to feel more stable, go ahead and do so. It's more important that you feel that you can come up gracefully than that you come up in crescent today. If you're in that crescent, soften your back knee, come all the way up. Hands can come to the hips, the thigh, or arms all the way to the sky. Take a deep breath here. Inhale again. And then as you exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, just starting to warm up that thigh again. Inhale, lift. Maybe you get the wobbles. Exhale, fold. You have one more like that. And this time you stay folded. Press your weight into your left foot. Do as many little steps as you need to bring that right foot forward and in, and maybe bring the right knee to the chest. And your hands can be wherever helps you to achieve that. And it's totally fine if, like I am doing, you wobble a lot. It's the practice. It's not the perfection. Tuck your left hip in. Hold for a breath. And then simply place your right foot next to your left foot. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. Exhale to fold. Inhale, find halfway lift. And then as you exhale, you're gonna take your feet a little wider and come to your squat. It can be your spider squat. It could be your horse squat. It could be your molasses squat. Or if you need to take your feet way wider and go to goddess squat, no problem. We're gonna hold here for now about 30 seconds. I move around a lot. Why not? Feels good. Feels nice in my hips to kind of shift a little bit side to side here. Quite pleasant. Take another breath. And then placing your fingertips down on the floor, on your legs, wherever you need to, you're going to Fold all the way forward, heel toe your feet in so they are now about hip distance-ish apart, and find your forward fold. 
Press the soles of your feet into the floor. Inhale, roll yourself all the way up to the sky. As you exhale, bring your hands into your heart. As you inhale, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Right foot or right knee steps back. Left foot or left knee steps back. Feel free to skip the half vinyasa and rest in a child's pose or a table here. If you feel fiery tonight, inhaling forward, you can join me in play. Exhale to the floor. Inhale, you can join some back bend, cobra or sphinx or up dog. And then we'll all meet in the next breath or two in the table or a downward facing dog. We're going to start this next set the same way. Left heel presses down if you're in that downward dog. Right foot lifts. Right toes face the floor. Lift the right heel so you feel the right hamstrings. You feel the right buttock working. And take another breath here. And then step that right foot forward. Crescent lunge or setting the back heel down if you prefer. Warrior one, if you're coming in that crescent, soften your back knee. Lift all the way up as you inhale. Take a moment to get settled in here. Front knee over, front ankle. Inhale. And then as you exhale, you fold forward. You're going to go right into that balance. You're going to step, 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 step it up. Maybe it's like a million times that you have to touch that foot to the floor. Tuck the right hip in. A couple of different things you can do here. Option number one is going to be the simplest option. And if you feel really wobbly, it might be the option for you. You're just going to step your left foot over to the outside of your right foot. I'm just going to turn so that I'm facing you. You don't need to move. Left foot to the outside of the right foot. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Maybe sit a little back into your squat. If that feels good and you want a little more, you float your left foot as you have your legs crossed. Sit back a little in your chair. If you need a little more, maybe you tuck your left foot behind your right calf. That one's pretty optional. I don't always feel that that feels nice to my knees, so I kind of let my foot float over to the side. Hands are wherever they help you. Keep squeezing your inner thighs together. Relax your shoulders. And then your goal here is to unwind yourself. You're going to bring your left knee back in towards your chest. I'm just moving back to the front of my mat. And what you're going to do is see if you can go back the way you came in. So take that left leg behind you. It's almost like you're flirting with warrior three. You can plant your hands down at this point and step back to a lunge position. Wiggle around to get comfortable. Right knee over right ankle. Back foot is facing straight forward and back. And then drop your right knee to the floor. Untuck your toes if you prefer. Shrug your shoulders back and maybe a little lift, hands to thighs, hands to hips or arms all the way up to the sky. Squeeze your inner thighs together again. Feel the activation that that brings into your life. Take another deep breath. And then folding forward. Going back, you could go for a three-legged table or tuck your back toe and lift your left knee and go for a three-legged dog, your choice. You're going to take your right foot back up into the sky, exactly where we began. And then take your right foot to the floor. You could take a half vinyasa here if you like, or you could take a little rest before we go to the other side, come to a child's pose or lie flat on your belly. Depending on how you feel today, the balance part might be the really hard part or the balance part might be the part that gives you that fierce smile. Oh my God, I did it. It's fantastic. Remember that we all have both of those kinds of days. Some days it's a child's pose day. Some days it's a fierce day. When you're ready, we're going to meet back in table or downward facing dog, your choice. Make your way there. We're going to do that whole thing over onto the left side. So when you're ready, right heel presses down if you're in dog, and you lift the left heel up. Drop the left hip, toes face the floor, and you're going to hold here for a breath. We start to feel the leg, feel the work in the hip. And then step that left foot up between the hands. Crescent lunge or warrior one. Find your positioning. Lift all the way up. Take a moment to find balance. Inhale. 
Exhale to hinge at the hips, folding forward. Wait until that left foot, really press your left heel to the floor, and maybe even one smooth move, maybe not, all the way up, drawing that right knee in towards your chest. And then you go to your eagle pose, and the eagle pose that you go to tonight is totally up to you. Maybe you just step your right foot and you place it on the floor on the outside of your left foot, and you just squeeze your inner thighs together, and you're going to get all of the work in your feet and your ankles and your legs, but with a little bit more stability. Maybe you think, I think I could float my right foot as I cross my legs. Maybe I can even sit back a little bit into my imaginary eagle chair. Maybe I like to hook my foot. Let your arms do whatever they need to do to support you. Sometimes that's placing a hand on the wall. That's totally fine. Squeeze your thighs together. Press down into your left heel. Just lifting the pit of your belly up. Take another breath here. And then you go out to the way you came in. So you're at the short front edge of your mat. You can see if you can lift up. Uncross your feet. Maybe you can lift your right knee into the chest. Maybe you can float back. Maybe your float is more like a plummet of that right foot back towards the back of the mat. Lowering it down. Ending up back in that lunge position. Planting your hands to frame your left foot. Bring your right knee to the floor. When you're ready, lift on up. Shrug your shoulders back. Maybe the arms come to the sky, maybe they don't. Squeeze the inner thighs together again. Draw your left hip a little back. And at this point, what I hope you're feeling is your buttocks and your thighs and the soles of your feet all working to defy gravity, to keep you lifted. Inhale, and as you exhale, you fold forward, step back, three-legged table or three-legged dog. It's your choice. You can even go from three-legged table to three-legged dog if you want. Inhale there, and as you exhale, place the foot of the knee to the floor. Option to take a half vinyasa if you feel frisky or to rest. See what your body needs this evening. more breaths, whatever you need, whatever place your body needs to be in right now. And when you're ready, come back to table or downward facing dog. And then walk or step your feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, find halfway fold. Exhale to fold. As you inhale, roll all the way up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Go ahead and turn to face towards the short edge of your mat. So just so you have space on either side of you, if you have lots of space on either side, you can open your arms up wide facing the short edge of your mat. You can totally stay there. But if like me, you're kind of close to a wall, you want to have enough space because we're going to do some little kicks from side to side here and they're going to be squat kicks so again this is not going to be easy hopefully it will be fun and will make you laugh at yourself take your feet wider than your hips toes a little out heels a little in and again you customize as you go so try one and see how it works and then make modifications so that you can make this functional for your body as you exhale, you're gonna squat. And maybe this first time you only come down a little bit. You squat, and then you're gonna shift your weight to your left foot. Straighten your legs, lift your right knee in towards you. This is a little like tie bow. And you're just gonna kick your right leg out to the side. <laughs> Bring your right knee in and squat. And maybe you go a little lower, maybe it feels perfectly fine to come all the way down to Malasana. Weight to the right foot, lift up. Lift that left knee in, kick it out to the side, and find your way back to that squat. Work at your own pace. There's no need to be going fast. You squat, you lift the knee into the chest as you come up. You kick the leg out to the side and you squat. And honestly, the slower you go, the harder this is. Exhale to squat. Inhale to lift, weight to the right foot, draw the left knee to the chest. Exhale, kick it away and squat. And you're just gonna go a few more times side to side. See if you can make this Maybe a little bit fluid. 
and maybe fluid is just one tiny moment within the next few moments where you feel totally awkward. But it's good for you to feel totally awkward. If you felt perfect all the time, no one would like you. You'd be very boring. All right, try one more on each side perhaps. Maybe kick, have a little fun with it. Get a little, get out of here. Come back into your squat, whatever level works for you. Take a deep, full breath there. And then plant your hands to the floor, your hands to your legs, and come back to your forward fold. And let it all go. Feel your thighs, feel your hips, your knees, your toes, your ankles. We're gonna put that together into a little flow. We're gonna stand on one foot just a couple more times. And then we're gonna stand on no feet at all. Lie down. Inhale, find halfway lift. As you exhale, fall. Inhale, roll all the way up to the sky. Exhale, hands come in front of the heart. Walk yourself back to the front of your mat if you left it. Shrug the shoulders away from the ears. Get ready. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale to fold. Inhale. As you exhale, plant your hands down. Step your left foot or your left knee back. Step your right foot or your right knee back. Feel free to stay in table or dog or even child's pose. Or if you have lots of fire, half a yasa plank. Push up. Back bend of choice. Cobra up dog. Sphinx. And then wall meet in the next breath or two in table. Or downward facing dog. Starting the same way we've been, lifting the right foot up as you press the left heel to the floor. Step the right foot forward. Coming up, crescent lunge or warrior one, your choice. See what works for you. Relax your shoulders as you inhale. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, weight into that right heel. Lift up, left knee towards the chest. Maybe it goes really smoothly, maybe it doesn't. And then what you're gonna do is Kick that left foot out to the side. If you don't have a lot of space, you can always hop over. I'm just going to tap the wall. Bring the left knee into the chest and find the squat. If you need to take your feet really wide, don't hesitate. It could be a horse. It could be all the way down to Malasana. When you're ready, lift up. Your weight comes back to your right foot. You're going to lift your left knee into your chest again. You're going to kick it out to the side. You're going to bring it back in. And then my foot is kind of out to the side. If that troubles your knee, you can always turn your right foot facing back to the front of the mat. Step your left foot back. Bring your hands down as you bring your foot down and sail through three-legged table or three-legged dog. Exhale, right foot or right knee to the floor. Take a little break. If you need to drop down to child pose or your belly, please do. If you feel really frisky, feel free to add a half vinyasa here. If you are really enjoying the heat today. And when you're ready, the left foot floats up, left toes face the floor, left foot steps between the hands. We're doing the same thing over here, so crescent lunge or warrior one, your choice. Come all the way up, relax your shoulders, lift your arms, take a deep breath, inhale where you are, exhale to hinge forward, press into your left heel, draw your right knee into your chest. Inhale here. As you exhale, you can bend your left knee a little bit as you kick your right foot out to the side. Draw it back in. Plant the foot down. You might have to widen your feet here for your squat, or you can go into a closed foot squat like an Upatasana. That's totally fine. Inhale, come back up. Weight again to that left foot. Draw the right knee in. Kick it to the side. Lift it in. Lift it back behind you. And you might be wobbling like absolutely crazy right now. Do the best that you can. Hands to the floor, foot to the floor. Sail back, table or dog, lifting that left foot to the sky and then placing the left foot to the floor. Bring your knees to the mat. Untuck your toes and find your child's pose. Feel your body, feel your breath. Just 
one more balance pose to go. Come back to your table or your downward facing dog. Float your right foot behind you as you bend. As you exhale, step your right foot forward. From there, crescent lunge or warrior one, coming all the way up. Relax your shoulders. Hinge at your hips, fold forward. Weight to that right foot, see if you can draw that left foot in. And if saved the best for last, we're gonna go into tree pose. Your foot is already really high. You might try placing your foot on your thigh or your calf immediately. If your foot's already quite low, you might start by placing the sole of the foot at the ankle. And again, I'm just gonna turn to face you. You don't need to move unless you want to. And in your tree pose, draw your right hip in towards you. Find the space that feels just right. If you feel and all of your muscles are going wobble, 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 wobble. Go ahead and feel like a wall. Stand up against the wall for this pose. Put your hand on the back of your couch, wherever you happen to be. And you stay here for a few moments. It doesn't matter if you stay balanced on the foot or you fall over. All that matters is that whatever happens, you smile. Balance is extremely difficult. Just because it's extremely difficult doesn't mean that it is not valuable. Even when you try to balance and you fail and you wobble all over the place, and you fall over every single time, you're still working those muscles that are needed for balance. You're still attempting to balance. And sometimes the attempt is way more important than the outcome. It's the journey, not the destination, I think is what they say. When you're ready, you can release this tree pose. Come up to stand at the front of your mat if you moved away. Lift your arms up over your head as you inhale. As you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. If you exhale, you can walk or step your feet back a little back to table. Downward facing dog just to start the same way. If you want to add a half vinyasa, you can. You can get really frisky here if you need to. When you're ready from your table or your dog, you just lift your left foot up. And you step your left foot forward. This is the last crescent lunge or warrior one. So give it everything you've got. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, relax. Inhale, grow tall. As you exhale, hinge forward. Press the weight into the left heel. You'll really feel your legs lift that right knee up and in. And see if you can imagine that you're floating to your tree pose. Even if that floating imagines a lot of drawing with the foot on the floor. If you want to step to a wall, I'm going to step to the wall. Feels really nice to be totally supported in my balance pose here today. You're on your left foot and you're lifting your right heel. Whether you place it at the ankle, the calf, or the thigh is irrelevant. Find that place where you can smile. And you can be proud of what you have accomplished. be proud that you fell over the entire time but you are still doing this class or maybe you're proud that you haven't fallen over at all today it's been one of those fanci fanciful balance days where everything just magically works and you're proud that you challenged yourself and you listened to your body and you took a break when you needed one you pushed yourself when you needed to. Feel your breath growing a little more quiet. As 
relax and go ahead and release this side. Again, if you came off your mat, you're just gonna walk yourself back up to the front. Take your feet wide, toes out, heels in, and squat any squat that works for you. This is the last one, so enjoy it. Maybe enjoy that last little bit of heat. Take a deep breath here. And then bring yourself all the way down to the floor. And you're going to just come directly to lie on your back. As you come to lie on your back, hug your knees one at a time and towards your chest. Turn the soles up, your feet up towards the ceiling. You can hold your feet, your calves, your ankles, your thighs. And find your happy baby. Notice that your happy baby looks a lot like a gravity-free squat. Now, instead of applying weight to the muscles, you're not working the muscles, you're just stretching the muscles. Using that same kind of shape in the body, but now that we're upside down, the purpose of the pose changes a little bit. your legs. Bring the soles of your feet one at a time back to the floor. And then you're going to stretch your left leg towards the end of the mat. And then just bring your right knee in towards you. Kind of hold maybe behind your thigh here. And you could take a simple twist here by taking your right leg over to the side and extending your right arm. That might feel quite nice. And you want to kind of feel the outer line of your body so you feel your torso, you feel the outside of your right hip. If you don't feel a stretch there when you do this twist here. You might try a little bit of a different twist where you grab your right foot with your left hand. I like to hold the outside of my foot, but you could hold your peace sign fingers on your toe or wherever feels good. And you let your right knee kind of drift away from you. So you're getting some external rotation in your thigh. You might already start to feel the hip. And if that feels good, you can take a little twist here and you can kind of keep pushing your right knee down to the bottom of the mat as you take your right foot over to the left and you might get a little more traction there in the outer hip and the glutes which is what you're trying to feel here and a lot of work there with the balancing and the squatting and the lifting so just kind of release for a second and let it go this one is called unicorn by the way You're going to release that right foot to the floor and slide the right leg out long. Same thing on the left. You may find that you get plenty of stretch by drawing the left knee to the chest and crossing the left knee over to the outside of the body. You can always use props here as well. Maybe even turn the look over to the left. If that doesn't feel quite right, you can try the unicorn. From your back, you grab your left foot with your right hand and you externally rotate your thigh. You kind of take your left knee and I'm pushing here for illustration. I'm not actually pushing on my leg because I don't want to hurt my knee. I'm just kind of using this to guide my knee outwards. You might already feel a stretch and if you don't, you go over into that little twisty action and you keep guiding your knee towards the bottom of the mat. So instead of it bringing it in towards you, it goes away from you. A little unicorn pose. And again, you're just feeling your body and now what you're feeling is the lengthening of the muscles. Hopefully you feel pleasantly fatigued at this point. center line. And here you could hug both of your knees in towards your chest, maybe rock a little from side to side. And we're going to come to seated and do a forward fold. You can rock forward and back or you can rock to the side and use your hands to press yourself up. So make your way to seated and bring the soles of your feet together. Knees out to the side and sit 
far enough away from your feet that you can sit up straight and tall. You can even kind of wiggle your butt back behind you. Feel free to sit up onto a prop or to put props underneath your knees here if that feels more supported for your body. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you just allow yourself to fold. And you can hold your feet. Put your hands on the floor. You can use a prop here. You can put your hands on a block. You can put a block underneath your forehead, resting on your feet here if you want. Maybe you like to move a little side to side. <sighs> and let this just kind of be a little bit easy. You're not forcing this pose. You're just melting into it. We did lots of work today, so allow this cool down to be the antithesis, the kind of counter to that. We got hot, and now we cool down. slowly roll yourself all the way back up. Roll your shoulders back. Gather your knees in towards you. We're going to take a seated twist and you can sit cross-legged or you can extend your legs out in front of you. See what feels most comfortable to you. On an inhale, lift your arms overhead. On an exhale, twist to your right, drop your hands down, maybe one to the floor, one to the leg, depending on your positioning. Relax your shoulders and soften your tailbone towards the floor. And allow yourself to relax here. Let the challenge of this pose not be how far you can go, like rotating yourself around. I'm so far, I can see far back behind me. No, the challenge of this pose is how much can you not care about what's happening and you can just enjoy it. You just get there and you're like, okay, this is good. I don't need to force the issue. this gentle place. When you're ready, inhale, come back to the center, bring your arms up if you like, and then exhale, same thing over the other side. It's not about how far you can go, it's about how relaxed can you make it. This is the Jimmy Buffett of yoga poses. Let your jaw relax. Let your tailbone soft. What about the creases of your elbows? Are they relaxed? all mellow and melty, we'll take our pigeon pose. So if you want to take a really gentle option for pigeon pose or your knees tend to trouble you, you can simply roll back onto your back, cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. Maybe that's fine and that feels plenty stretchy to the hips, or maybe you draw your left knee in towards you. You can come here in this variation of pigeon pose. A lot of control over how much stretch you get in your outer right hip. If that one doesn't work for you, you can always come forward, come to your table or your downward facing dog. 
and then take your right knee behind your right hand. Tuck your left toes under and slide your left foot to the back of the mat, lying your left thigh down. And maybe it feels really good to just lie forward over that right thigh and let this be kind of a mellow pigeon pose. So you can fold forward pretty much immediately if you want. You can prop yourself up. If that doesn't feel quite right, you can always sit to the outside edge of your right hip. Draw your left foot in a little more so your legs are pinwheel. And then fold forward from that position. And you just want to feel that nice stretch again in the outer hip. We're just releasing again all that work we did in the glutes and the thighs. And hamstrings. Again, keep it mellow. It's a pleasantly deep stretch. Switch sides. If you're lying on your back, you can simply uncross and then cross the left ankle over the top of the right knee, drawing the knee in if you want to. If you're facing forward, you can kind of come back to your table or your dog. Maybe you can wiggle that right leg around a little bit and then step your left knee behind your left hand. You can go to the traditional pigeon, folding forward right over that left knee with the back thigh on the floor. Or you can go pinwheel and you can sit on the outside of your hip. So you're sitting kind of on the outside of your left butt cheek. Right knee comes in and you can fold forward from that position. Generally speaking, this is a good option if your hips are on the tighter side. You have really tight IT bands because the IT band doesn't pull so much on the knee. So if you have knee pain in your pigeon, the first or the third option are usually the best. So you get the stretch, but without the tugging of the body in a place where you don't want it. Melt yourself into this. Rest and joy. Should be pleasant. Again, you should be able to smile here. table or your dog if you're facing forward and move around for a few breaths. If you're on your back, go ahead and just uncross your legs and stay there because those of us who are facing forward are going to come to join you on our backs. And come all the way back down to the floor. And we're going to take a bridge pose here. So draw the soles of your feet in so your knees are pointing up to the ceiling. Let's go for some robot arms. So triceps on the floor, palms of the hands face one another, fingertips point straight up, press into the backs of the arms, press into the heels of your feet and lift your hips up. And we're just going to hold here for about four or five breaths. Press into the heels of your feet as you lift your hips, but at the same time, firm your belly button. It's like you're drawing your belly button in like a little drawstring and then draw it a little bit up towards the ceiling. And you'll feel, again, a little bit of heat in your legs. This is not a totally restful pose here. You'll feel a little stretch. Feel a little strength. Take another breath there. And then release the hips to the floor. We have just one more thing to do. Draw the right knee into the chest. Extend the sole of the right foot to the sky, catch behind the thigh or the calf or the ankle, and draw that right leg towards you. Feel the back of the thigh releasing. If you prefer, you can take the left leg down to the bottom of the mat. Relax your shoulders. Letting that right leg go, you can extend it all the way down to the bottom or do sole of the foot to the floor, left knee to the chest. Catch behind the left thigh, calf, or ankle and draw that left leg in. Just find that sweet stretch at the back 
of the thigh. As you exhale, go ahead and release, slide the soles of both of your feet to the end of the mat. Reach the arms up over your head. And then here, reach a lot through your right side. So reach through your right toes, reach through your right fingertips. You feel the whole right side of your body elongate, relax the left side. And then relax the right side, elongate the left side. It's like you're trying to reach out and touch the wall behind you and the wall in front of you and your toes and your fingertips. And then relax again, stretch the right side, relax the left side. Relax the right side, stretch the left side. Once more on each side, stretching and then softening. And then come back to the midline. Let your arms come down by your sides. You can let your feet flop open if you feel that this is perfectly restful, you can simply come directly to Shavasana. If there is any other pose or shape that you need, you are more than welcome to add that in before making your way to a comfortable resting place for your body. breath in and a big breath out and just put a smile on your face the time, please stay a little longer. If you need to go back to your day, take a deep breath in, maybe even reach your arms up over your head again. Big sigh out, wiggle your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, make your way over to one side to rest for a few breaths. for coming to your most comfortable seat this evening. As you're ready, bring the hands in front of your heart. Again, put a little smile on your face. 
face and we'll close with our deep breath together in through nose, out through mouth, on three. One, two, three. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and your time with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.